Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to pump down an R410A condensing unit. This is not a heat pump, this is a condenser, and we're going to be trying to pump this down into the inch HG, which on this low side gauge right here is in the green. So we're going to try to pump this down and get it all done in one shot. If we are unable to pump it down, then what we're going to do is we're going to end up recovering the rest. If Say if the compressor is not strong enough or we don't get it low enough into an inch HG vacuum. There is no leaks on this, uh, on this system. If there was a leak on this system, we would only pump this unit down to zero PSIG. And pumping down means we're taking all the refrigerant from the outdoor unit, the line set, and the indoor unit, and we're trapping it in the outdoor unit. And we're gonna be locking it down with these valves right here. All right, so presently I have the indoor air conditioner thermostat on and I turn the temperature down really low. I have the outdoor disconnect off right now, okay, and I'm going to put that back in. So instead of holding a contactor in with a screwdriver or whatever, uh, it's, a, it's safer if you can just go ahead and turn the thermostat down really low. Then you can just control when the outdoor unit turns on and off via the disconnect. So we're going to go ahead and connect our, our gauge set in and I already loosened these up with the adjustable wrench. You know, we just loosen them up a little bit and then we can undo them with our hand. And we're gonna be connecting our hoses right in here and here. So this is the low side, so we're gonna connect the blue side gauge to the large vapor line. So it's vapor's low side. So that's this unit right here. Make sure that your gauge handles are shut, your hoses are tight, everything's ready to go, and then we can go ahead and connect in. So right now the refrigerant is equalized. We have roughly the same pressure on both sides. This side's a little bit higher since the last time it shut off. Maybe it didn't get to equalize 100%, but it's definitely been off for more than five minutes. So right now we're just gonna purge the air out of the lines because we're gonna be pumping this down into the inch HG. So I don't wanna pump the air that's in the hoses into the system. So right now I have this valve off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this one, open this one, and I'm gonna purge out of the yellow line. Okay, that's it. So we got all the air out. You can kind of hear by the noise uh, and just how it looks. So all the air is out of line. We're gonna go ahead and close our handles back down. We've got refrigerant in all of our hoses, so we're ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and put our service wrench right down into the female Allen key slot right here in the liquid line service valve. So this will be the first line that we're gonna end up shutting. If this was a heat pump, we would need to make sure that we shut this line down and shut this line down before the unit shuts off because of the reversing valve. But in this case, uh, technically we only need to shut down the liquid line just due to uh, the compressor holding all the refrigerant back because the compressor, when it's off, does not equalize the refrigerant across it. So it should hold all the refrigerant in front of the compressor because from this vapor line to the compressor is a very short distance. It's only about two foot. All right, here we go. We're going to have this unit on for maybe about two minutes or so, and then we'll go ahead and start closing that liquid line down. And then what's going to happen is we're going to see that both this side and this side will start going down because the compressor is sucking in the refrigerant into the vapor line. Sometimes the compressors are not strong enough in order to do this though. So we'll say in that case you do have to quickly shut down the uh, vapor line if you do have the liquid line shut. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and start shutting this down. So when we shut this down we're going to be front seating this valve all the way down to the bottom. Okay, Right now it's back seated 
and we do have access out of the side just due to this being a Schrader valve on the side when it's when it's all the way back seated. So when this is back seated or mid seated, we still have pressure coming through the uh, service port right here just because there's a Schrader valve in the way that this valve is set. But what we're going to do is we're going to front seat this all the way down and that will shut off the refrigerant flow and block it right here. So that's now front seated. We're gonna get get ready on this side now. All right, that compressor is definitely not strong enough, so we're just gonna go ahead and shut this down. Yeah, I don't know if you heard that noise, but the compressor relief valve that's in the inside of the compressor actually went. The, the relief valve actually opened up so that compressor is not strong enough and that's actually why we're changing this unit out. We're going to go ahead and pull the disconnect now. So we are left with having to recover the refrigerant out of this unit because the compressor is not strong enough to do a pump down. It's unable to. So the pressure relief valve on the inside actually uh, opened up and so the high side actually went down back into the low side. So we shut off the refrigerant flow right here and we're gonna go ahead and recover the rest of the refrigerant. That is actually why we're changing this outdoor unit out because the compressor is not strong enough uh, and is making odd noises and it's making these noises when I'm not here. Though I did do amperage check, uh, voltage check, voltage before the unit's on, voltage after the unit's on. Uh, check the pressures to make sure that uh, they are not uh, going up. They're just slowly going down like normal on both sides when the unit's operating. Uh, but all of a sudden, you'll hear from what the homeowner's describing, a very, very loud racket coming from the compressor itself. And then the compressor uh, ends up shutting off. The outdoor fan stays on. Um, so I'm assuming that's going out on the... Uh, thermal overload in the inside of the compressor. The capacitor's new, the contactor's new, the thermostat is making sure it has the proper uh, five minute delay in it, so it's, it's none of those issues. It's not losing 24 volts, so it's just the compressor itself. So that's why we're changing the unit out. Just so you know, I don't typically do a pump down. I usually just recover all the refrigerant right out of the unit, um, but I was planning on maybe uh, hooking this up in the shop and doing a couple other tests on it, you know, just for the sake of uh, doing some videos. But normally I would just go ahead and pull all the refrigerant out of this unit and that's it. When doing a pump down, you know, you're just making more work for yourself uh, if you're going to end up scrapping this unit because then later you end up having to breeze the ends of these lines right here and then opening the valves up in order to recover the refrigerant back out so it's kind of like double the work it kind of defeats the purpose you can just recover all the refrigerant right out of it on site check the next upload video the recovery of this unit hope you enjoyed yourself we'll see you next time at ac service tech channel